That's so straight. For as hard as he's hitting it. It's the hardest that net's ever been hit, I can tell you that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah not, I mean, I feel like I'm just cruising. I was one, almost 133. That's, that's pretty damn good. Just another day in the life, right? Another day in the life of a 53-year-old. Thirty-six. Cruising. See, it doesn't even see. It doesn't feel like that's one thirty-six. What is? Uh, that feels the, like it's one twenty. What is the foresight reading as? Club. 195 ball speed, 356 carry. So we're, yeah. That's the thing that's so funny to me, man, is like if- 1800 spin, that was 1837. It's just, it's funny how just my body's just ready to go after, what was that, my sixth, fifth or sixth swing? I've got six recorded. Six. And that was it, I didn't hit any irons, nothing. That was pretty good. There's 39. <laughs> 139, right? That's that's like ridiculous. It just feels like I'm out for a Sunday drive. It's like no pun intended, of course. What but, do I got to uh, say to get you to go 140? Oh, yeah, we'll go 140 with this play driver. The crazy thing is I'm not even trying. But I feel like there's a little bit more, got a little bit more pressure in that left big toe. Do me a favor. Yeah. So you, you say you're dangling your left knee? No, I haven't, done, I haven't thought about That's that exactly yet. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. That is you exactly. want me to do that here? Go to the top yeah. for me. Just get as far up as you can, what feels like a normal backswing. Now let that left knee go limp. You feel how you get just a little more into that trail oh, side? Oh, for sure. That's where I want you to try to find it. If you remember when we were at Wayne State, I said that I wanted you to kind of almost feel like you just give it a little more time at the top, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And literally that is getting all the way back right. and really feeling like we're able to kind of let this finally let go. And then that finally puts it all here. Yeah. And, and then now helps we me load a little bit sooner there. Right? Correct. Uh, I think you're going to be a little more reactive in terms of athletic and trying to find that again okay. versus having it halfway loaded and then trying to use it. Okay. <clears throat> Try to really let it go limp. Let it go late? Limp. limp. Left knee. Okay. Dangle that over the plates. <laughs> Woo, that felt weird. Like that didn't even feel like I don't anything. think I read that one. I don't think you read it either. Wasn't really, I mean, it was 37, so. Yeah, I didn't hit it that great. That's fine, but I mean, you went 37.99. Yeah. And that's crazy, that's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, that was a heel, pretty pretty good heel, too. Yeah, I mean, it spun a ton. <laughs> just. That thing is like just moving. Yeah, and, I, I, and again, I don't, it doesn't feel like it, you know? It just doesn't feel like I'm swinging that fast. <laughs> Obviously, I am. I know you juice the track, man, Michael, to you make know, me man, feel good. Just so you know, it's a 70 degrees and 800 feet because you're in Michigan. That's 200 something, oh. probably. All right, I finally. That was the most solid one I've hit. We want to know first. Um, where can I get more efficient? Pick up some more speed. Well, we know that you were moving really well in the frontal plane last time, right? Mm hmm. I think so. it was the transverse plane you said we could right. do a little bit better. All right. So you felt good on this one. You mm -hmm. said it didn't feel like you were trying, so we were probably pretty efficient. So what we'll do is we'll do this. And we'll look at that frontal plane first. So maximum horizontal is right there, 18% towards the target. Okay. And we see that that is not quite timed up. Well, actually, I take that back. It's pretty good. It's 
kind of a little wonky there with the vertical and the D weighting. But I think that's because I, oops, I think that's because I cued you uh, to kind of feel like you're giving it a little more pause at the right. top. So I think that the reason that that's not more kind of dynamic is because you're actually intentionally trying to do something. Right, there. right. Does that make sense? Yes. So overall, I would say that that actually looks really good. So we see peak horizontal, minimum vertical. Okay. So what that does is it maximizes your frontal plane moment on. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Okay. So here's the cool thing. Just don't step on any cords. Now, because we're here, I can show you what I mean by that. Because I don't know about you, but I did not do well in school. <laughs> and I did not know what a moment, a moment arm was. <laughs> so essentially, we kind of have this spine, right? And I did a video on this on YouTube. But we kind of want to split the body into two halves with two centers of mass, right? So I've got the lower center of mass, the upper center of mass. We know energy goes this way, right, because of the ground force. So this is your dominant grade. So this is the first grape that wants to move. So if our target's over here, this grape has traditionally been taught to move away from the ball. Or I'm sorry, away from the target, right? We're supposed to move to the right, which would be away from the target, right? So the thing is, is that this upper grape is subordinate to this dominant grape and has to do the opposite. So if this dominant grape moves away, this upper grape moves towards. Does that kind of make sense? So how that kind of plays out is if I change the target to a castle, okay, and if I move my spine that way, it looks like that, right? Well, there's where I want to hit. There's the mass, and I better fire my field general because my catapult's backwards. Right, Joe, that doesn't work, okay? So we got to switch this around and get you to do a better job kind of unloading, getting into that right side like Dr. LeCaze was telling us we want to drop that left hip, right? Yeah. Okay, so when we do that, that kind of keeps this a little more centered, if not even pulled just a hair left. Now this one can actually move this way, away. And if I get the sway gap, is what they call that in sports box terminology, negative, and I get the chest behind, that means that all of a sudden I'm getting my body behind my center of pressure, and now I got some runway to take off with. And that's what creates that moment arm is the separation between the two. <clears throat> Does that kind of make sense? Well, this catapult will work. That one will not, because this one turns into that. So do I have the opposite? Not necessarily. Okay. But where we're going to see this get improved from a frontal plane perspective gotcha. is if I give you the ability to go transverse, okay, and move this more away that way. There we go. Yeah, I, I actually could maximize potentially frontal plane a little bit more. Okay. Let so, me see that, Eddie. So basically, I want to get this lower, but I think it's for for my thought is it's getting there. this there. high, yeah, yep. right? If I and by extending that right leg and really rotating, kind of pushing into the ground, getting this high, and then I can kind of so time your push with the right up with the drop left. Yes. Try to get the dangle to happen with that last little bit of push. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like that, that instead of waiting, I kind of almost feel like it's instant with the dangle mm -hmm. because that's just going to allow you to twist through that cuboid mm -hmm. as far as you can. Right. So I think it's a, like what you were saying earlier, it's kind of a, it's a sequencing thing, right? Mm -hmm. We need to get this to let go sooner mm -hmm. instead of kind of supporting you and then trying to get out of the way. Okay. We just want to let the right leg take over and then get out of the right leg but and I, you can be dynamic. I want more pressure in the left big toe at P4. Or it's just fine. before P4. Is that That's what you fine. want? Because yeah, I remember actually, when, it's going to be well, we had it going here, right, and then rotating, yeah. and then and push up, 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 up. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You really don't need the left leg because you're twisting against that, right? right. So you're taking the mass of the golf club mm -hmm. and the mass of your upper body and moving it left. Gotcha. So for you, it feels weird because if you were to go static, right, mm -hmm. and try to just like. Like that's really hard yeah. to hold, right? Right. But if we twist into that cuboid and get that to uh, stabilize in the lower right leg, uh -huh. then when I twist the rest, uh -huh. now it's like I'm stacked over that almost, right? Now we're obviously not wanting to move that far off the ball. Uh -huh. We're talking about extremes, but we want to feel like we load into that cuboid and this is done. By uh -huh. the time you load that cuboid, this is off. Right. That dangle that we've been talking about. So the 85-15 is about where I want to yep. be? Yep. I love 85-15. Okay. I think that's where I was, right? Yep. In uh, Fort Wayne, or 
Over in uh, Wayne State. Wayne State. Yeah, so your, look at that. Your there. best one was 8317. 8317. Yep. So, look at that. <clears throat> Proof's in the pudding. Different time, a different day, a different place. What was that? 86. 86, yeah. Your worst one was 88. And that's where it's really scary because we were talking about this, right? And like I was talking to one of the instructors that I recently did a training with, and he was showing me a pressure shift and a basically like a force production, just asked me to go through it with him. And it looked crazy bad. And I was like, dude, like you're a pretty good player, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, what's this? And he's like, oh, yeah, man, I was messing around the place and trying to get more pressure into my trail side. I was like, stop it. Like, yeah. do you have a capture of when you were not screwing around with it? And he's like, yeah. And he sent that over to me. It looked fine. And the worst thing that we can do with pressure is try to put more under the trail side, assuming that they're not getting at least 75% into their trail side. Gotcha. You familiar with that muscle? This is the one you wanted to tell me about. Yeah, Ilya has to tell us one more. Yeah. Okay. So it starts down here, mm -hmm. comes up there. That's the extension muscle right there. Where that goes through the cubicle. There. So basically winding that sucker all the way up. Right there. Mm -hmm. That spiral line pattern just. <clears throat> there. there. Starts down here, where everything else starts. Mm -hmm. Your lat starts down there, your multifidus starts down there, mm -hmm. and goes to. Tell me when I hit it on you. Is it? Right there? Yep. See where the, it attached to the ribs, right underneath the shoulder. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. You called this a muscle. This is a muscle. Right? Yep. Okay. So call me wrong again, mm -hmm. but for this muscle to load, mm -hmm. it would have to contract. Muscles contract. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Muscles yep. don't stretch, they contract. Yep. Yep. Well, they do stretch, but, but you, to, for it to load, it has to contract. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm internally rotate I'm sorry externally rotate your right shoulder mm -hmm. okay relax your right forearm mm -hmm. now try to pull your belly button as close to your midline as possible try to pull your right elbow as close to your belly button yeah that's it that's fine mm -hmm. try not to lock up too much up here and okay, now just make a fist for him mm -hmm. okay, and all i want you to do is just pivot that that's the one that's it this is what i was asking you about the other day That's the one, isn't it? Yep. That's it. There is definitely something there. Yeah. And I am here to tell you that yep. the worst yep. thing a golfer can do, now that I know that yep. for sure, mm -hmm. the number one killer of every golf swing, period, I don't care if we're talking speed, consistency, anything, if you get ab and adduction going, you're done. Mm -hmm. yep. Because it really screws it. You got to do so many things from there to kind of compensate, mm -hmm. you're done. And that's the number one thing that really blew my mind with you and really kind of drove this home for me and has turned me on to this thinking. Because watching you, dude, you don't have your arms up here. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. Right? Yeah. And if you watch people, and I get it, I truly do. Like my target's there. I got a golf club here. And if I move it as far that way as I can, I'm going to hit it far. Well, but in reality, they're just moving up right. and up. And that's the problem, right? They go that way. The right shoulder goes that way yeah. instead of going. Correct. Right. And they're like, look at how much width and length yeah. they have. You have I'm none. Like, no. You have none. none. <laughs> right. Right? But right. for you, like getting this thing to get underneath, right? It's like it's just right. a little freaking, like James Lights calls it a switchblade. Yep. You can call it a trip wire. You can call it whatever you want, man. But once you load that right spiral line, it's done. Show me that load, Eddie. I want to get back here. I want to get wide here. So that hole. I want to be able yep. to slap that thing and it just wants to fall down. Yeah, there you go, Eddie. Do it again? Yeah. I got you just so you don't fall. But let that left leg go totally left. There you go. I just keep playing with that, man. Every degree counts here. Okay. Every degree is one more that somebody else doesn't have. It, right? okay. uh -huh. I don't think I can move you far. <laughs> I think that's not what you got. Because I got some pretty good pressure in your trail shoulder. Right? Yeah. Now let that kind of that arm kind of sink back to play position. There you go. There you go. There you stay there. Now you ready? Uh -huh. You didn't have to think about going left. <laughs> no. There's, There's only one, one way to go. That's also max load for the right lat because the lat attaches there. Right. Right. Yep. 
Get away from me. Just get away from me. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh. I think there's a, I, I, like I said, transverse wise, I think yeah. we're going to see it. Uh -huh. Frontal plane looks pretty good. When we look at the braking of the frontal plane, though, we didn't take a look at that. Just to finish off that thought with the frontal plane. Yeah. We know that he maximizes the frontal plane moment arm from a force production standpoint. However, the braking mechanism in the frontal plane is ill-timed. Is what? Is ill-timed, meaning that the relationship between the minimum horizontal force towards the target, I'm sorry, the maximum negative force away from the target is not timed up with the maximum vertical force. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. We like to see those kind of get a little more timed up because yeah. if you peak that as you stop moving left, then you just fly. Mm -hmm. And then it's like we're super extended with the spinal column. You're literally slowing this thing down and mm -hmm. none of those joints are compressed in the spine. And that's when we want to slow down, when we're not compressed. We don't want to be slowing down when we're super compressed. That's when we get hurt. And that's why he hasn't gotten hurt. Because if anything, you're such a freak, freaking athlete, and you've figured out probably, I feel bad for the kids that play baseball against you as yeah. like little tykes. Because I can't imagine them just lobbing one to you and you just sending it into their daddy's windshield. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, it's even just, when I was pitching, right? I was throwing yeah. in the mid-70s. Yeah. And I can still see the kids' eyes. Yeah, scared. You know, they're, they're literally... Yeah, for sure. But the way that you've always loaded and unloaded into that trail cue boy, yeah. that seems like it's something you kind of had figured out before you started hanging out with 100%, Joe. 100%. Right? Never. I'm not trying to take anything and away. And that's what the reasons why we did this. I mean, I've had tour players. I've had, you know, so many <laughs> athletes and so many professional <laughs> athletes reach out saying, how are you doing this yeah. with no injuries? Yeah. Well, well how, how he was we, originally doing that passively. <clears throat> we right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So the cool thing is, is that because of that, in my opinion, as an athlete, if you're going to miss the timings of your vertical force, which is kind of the last one we do, so that's the one that we kind of have to worry about, that one is normally going to happen earlier than later. Uh -huh. And the average guy walking the street that can't break an egg, it's always later. Uh -huh. <laughs> always late. But with right. you, it's early because you kind of have that athletic idea of like, Hey man, I'm gonna get through this thing. Uh -huh. Nah, oh, let me keep my left arm straight and uh -huh. like abduct and adduct and like yeah. do all this. Like, w one thing that drives me crazy about my golf swing um, is I want to be able to be more. Once I make that pressure shift right, I want to go. Sometimes I get to my right side and I pause for a second and then I go. I want to. I want to be able to go left, right, and go. I literally think you're at the <clears throat> starting line. Yeah. And you're right there, and you're with like John Force, uh -huh. and you're gonna have to put down the run of your life uh -huh. to beat this guy. He's uh -huh. the master. You're right. gonna have to have a perfect tree. Right. And you go to drop the clutch, and you blow the parachute. No, you blow the parachute. Okay. And I think the reason that happens is because that left knee is the parachute. Okay. And it's out and dragging. It's not letting you go. Uh -huh. the way you want to go because if we got some pressure there we got some resistance there we're okay. trying to hold that point between the brain and the foot so i want to have some pressure in there i'm More just saying no i'm saying i want no, no no i'm saying i think you just want to let that go okay let it go or trigger with it i think i think triggering with it is what's causing it to kind of stay a little too long i think there's a little too much trigger maybe I'm, I'm, when you're long driving, dude, like, don't get me wrong. Right. Like, we're probably yeah. going to go a little more trigger. Right. But playing but you've wise, kind of been talking a little more play today, and you're mm -hmm. swinging your play drive right, right, right now. Right. So I'm kind of thinking more in that line Which right is, now. Who, who are we going to be presenting to? 99.9% .9 players. Right. But I think that the strategy doesn't change between the two, and that's where you two have really changed my thinking. I used to say, like, you can't do long drive and play golf, uh -huh. and you've obviously proven that's not necessarily the case. No. Okay, so it's like I need to figure out, like, hey, are these things the same or are they different? Uh -huh. And the more I look at what you do, the more I go, well, I would teach anybody to do that if they could. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> they just can't do what you do because right. you're a freak athlete. Right. You're special. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So long story short, man, I think just to keep <clears throat> it simple, I don't like you delaying it at the top because I don't like having a guy that wants to hit it thinking about don't hit the ball. Uh -huh. It's a terrible strategy. Yeah, right. Right. That's kind of like toying with a pit bull. Eventually they like lock down and that's the end of the fun. Uh -huh. Okay. So all I want you to do is feel like, hey, 
I'm trying to hold myself only on that right foot. As soon as you hit it, I want you, instead of feeling like you go down into it, uh -huh. I want you going up into it. Okay. I okay. want you to feel like our boy we were talking about to where that it almost feels like you throw the left shoulder up and across. The thing I didn't love, I'm not trying to be critical, mm -hmm. I didn't like, the only thing from your guys' presentation, I don't like, first, I don't like positions. Secondly, I really don't like that P5 position. Uh -huh. And the reason oh. I don't like, I'm not saying that what he does isn't different, but I don't like that P5 because that elbow is clearly behind the hip. Uh -huh. And if he's here, he's going to have to really have this thing working well. But don't you think if I had the, where, where do you want the right elbow at P5? Go with that. So show me your five. P5 is here. Okay, stay there. I think for safety purposes, uh -huh. I want to try to get it more in there. Really? Yeah, 100%. Because you can't shut that face from there, Eddie. Hmm? You can't shut that face from there. No. I feel like I'm going to hit a dead right. I, and I love that because yeah. you know what that's going to make you do? It's going to make you shut the face. Mm -hmm. And if you shut the face, then all of a sudden, instead of hanging faces with big spin rates that stay in the grid but go nowhere, uh -huh. now every now and then you think you smoked one left, but it actually hangs in the grid and it's a f***ing goner. Yeah. I really, yeah. Because if you think about it, I basically it, want to go a little bit more. You have external. this terrible thing that happens that we all do. It's called our brain is way smarter than we are. Yeah. Okay. Right. And here's the problem: you get the five sometimes when you're playing, maybe just out with your boys or whatever. You get the five, <clears throat> and you go, "Oh boy, I just bought somebody something because this is going to cost money." Mm -hmm. Right? You know it, mm -hmm. or you even hit the ball. You know you're done. And the reason that is, is because in my opinion, when your elbow gets behind, go ahead and get behind again. When your elbow gets behind, mm -hmm. this wrist is starting to circle around that elbow. Mm -hmm. And that means gotcha. that this is starting to let go. And you know exactly what that means. And there's nothing you can do from there, dude. When this arm is behind the frame of the body, even there, at 110 miles. Like even at nothing. Right. There's just too much force <sighs> trying to move on you, and you can't stop that. So what I really love is I really love getting into, I kind of, here, let me see both your arms. Yeah, kids, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So show me how you hold them. Like when they're babies, man. Like oh, when they're yeah. babies, babies, right? Hands together. Okay, underneath, soft. Hey, you're too goddamn strong. These are your children. Soft. Soft. There we go. So, yeah, hold the baby. There you go. Nice. Now, the reason that your arms are soft is because now you can absorb all the movement for the baby. The baby has a very heavy head that it can't support yet, so you don't want them jarring themselves and hurting their necks, right? So we're nice, soft, and supportive. Now, get rid of this for me. Now, if you were going to take that baby in your right arm, and you were going to support it, and you were going to rock it side to side... You'd probably keep this a little more still. Mm -hmm. You'd probably, there we go. There we go. And now we're just rocking the baby side to side. Nice and supportive. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now they want to go for a ride. Wee! Oh, sh you almost drop them. Don't drop them. Wee! Oh, there you go. You pull them in to not lose them. Mm -hmm. You would never take a mass and try to move it away from you mm -hmm. and control it. You would always be more here, mm -hmm. which is why I like that right shoulder feeling a little more external. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and drive into the cue boy and get back. You have no fear. Uh -huh. There is no fear. Uh -huh. You are going to absolutely detonate this. Uh -huh. There, you know what you got to do from here. Uh -huh. There's no doubt. The mission is clear. Go. Uh -huh. Yep. Because now the, the right hip, right, the right femur has picked up the lateral epicondyle. Uh -huh. And now he's got to go with that left side. Like, that pressure has to go left. It can't stay back. Uh -huh. And, dude, it's, it's either a little kind of pulley left yeah. or smoke show. Yeah. None of this weak right. Because you yeah. can't long drive with weak right. No. So if you think about it, what he doesn't do is he doesn't really maximize his transverse plane. Right? So that's this one, right? Mm -hmm. And the only thing that you're gaining, in my opinion, is like more diagonal, right? So if you think about this, if I get you more here instead of here, uh -huh. 
Yeah, this kind of has more of that look and more of this look, right? If I get you more here, it's more like of a diagonal kind of shortcut, uh -huh. right? This way. So if we think about that, that's exactly what we're talking about in transverse. Uh -huh. So I think you can look at it through the braking mechanism of the frontal plane, or you can look at it through the transverse plane, however you kind of want to look at it. I don't think it matters. But I think what matters is for you, if you can get this right arm more connected, dude, uh -huh. I think it gets scary. Uh -huh. Because I think, like, I know you don't have to hit all six balls right now. Right. I, I Irons, mean, woods, everything. Like, I legit, like, I think that kind of what me and you have talked about thus far is like, hey, how do I get it to do one thing on the golf course? Like, one thing. I just want one thing. Like, you can make, if you actually own that one thing, that'll work in any situation. Right? Like, if you can do that one thing, it does this. When it misses, it does that. But it right. should do this, and it does this eight out of ten times. And then teach you how to like act, actually control your dynamic lie with your wedges, which by the way, this will help tremendously. And you're going to get stupid because you're just going to start throwing darts. I've always felt like at the top, like a P4, uh -huh. my right forearm, my right forearm is on the same, it's, very, it's parallel to my spine angle. I want you to try to make it shallower. I was just going to say, just you want me to just kind of get it a little get bit it more, a little bit more ninety, a little bit more perpendicular. I want you to try to get it opposite. Okay. I want you to literally try to lay it <clears throat> down okay. that way. So I want you to really, you don't right. have a ton. Yeah. But here's the thing, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to have a ton of external here because you get to use that. So mm -hmm. turn that. So stay. Nope. This way. Oh. Keep going. Yeah. Nice. So mm -hmm. see, we don't need. To get the club around with this, oh. we need to get the club around with the rib That's cage. External, yeah, rib cage, external. Rib cage. There and then from there, dude. All you're doing is going like Macho Man Randy Savage off oh, the top rope and just dumb. drop an elbow on it. Like keep the elbow underneath and support it, right? You got the kid supported here. Oh, boom! And just throw him. different ball speed was significantly higher i really i'm not trying to do i'm just trying to get deeper i'm not really trying to externally rotate right, my, right. my shoulder i'm just trying to i kind of like to think about keeping by the way i broke the cardinal sin you don't care if i grab your driver no. okay if you kind of like i feel okay and i'm not saying that it's real i'm just saying i interpret that I've got my wrist underneath the shaft uh -huh. and I've got my elbow underneath the shaft. Uh -huh. I'm in that right trigger like we talked about. Uh -huh. Okay, but my job here is to feel like I keep my elbow inside of the golf club. Uh -huh. I don't ever want to feel like I get going no. around it that way. Uh -huh. I want to feel like I just keep it wedged in the whole time. Just like that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Elbow inside the golf club. Yep. Feeling like we get it underneath and then kind of support it. Because if we think about it, and I don't know which is the correct terminology, but I think of it as extension in the trail wrist. But if I get some extension in the trail wrist, that puts the golf club kind of outside my forearm to begin with. And then my job is to maintain that relationship. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. I want to support the weight of the golf club. The minute that the golf club gets heavy uh -huh. and gets outside of my frame, uh -huh. then we start doing all kinds of stuff with the body to react to the golf club. Right. But if I keep the golf club in front of the body, then I just drive the body the whole time and like golf gets a lot simpler and a lot less confusing. Yeah. Just really feel like you support it all the way to the top, Eddie, with the right arm. Okay. Right spiral line central. That looked good. And yeah, that felt a little different. Flowier. Felt flowier. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mishit it, but that was 135. That's crazy, man. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, dude, yeah. I, I really think, like, I know that we got time and stuff, and I'm happy to show you and share with whatever, but I'm a big fan of trying to measure as much as I can so that I can stay on message with you guys. Yeah, no, for sure. And, like, my big thing with you, my mm. only thing with you, 
is that I strongly feel that we need to do a better job getting into four with what feels like massive AC joint, which could potentially feel some days like a little more external. Uh -huh. That might be a great way for you to kind of find that on competition okay. days. Uh -huh. Is just literally kind of stand with your ribs down in good posture. Uh -huh. Get your elbow as close to your belly button as you can. Uh -huh. Go ahead and do that for me. So stand in good posture. Elbow as close to your belly button as you can. You should feel a lot of the stress right here. Oh, yeah. Nice. And then just rotate it. Keep it right hand and just rotate it as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping that tension yeah. on the inside. Oops, sorry. Thank I got you. a cramp. Oh, nice. <laughs> so lower first. Mm -hmm. Load the right cuboid. Okay. Get that out of there. It's all here. There you go. Nice. Now, I feel like this stays more in, oh. and this turns behind it. There you go. Quit trying to pull on the arm. Now that you got that cuboid all the way, yeah, now use the ribs to get a little farther. A little better? Is that what you're talking about? Cool. All I did was I just tried to basically rotate my AC joint. Wow, is that good? Better? Pretty I forgot this part earlier. We were talking about putters, uh -huh. right? At the end of the day, man, like we have to understand how we unload something, uh -huh. load and unload, right? Uh -huh. And that's where I think we've gone really wrong with the putters because people are afraid to swing them uh -huh. because they weigh so much that if they put it in motion, they can't stop the goddamn thing because yeah. they're in terrible posture. You know what I mean? Well, just lock it in and move your shoulders. Yeah, right, just rock the shoulders, <laughs> right? It's, so my point is this, is like there's a breaking force there as uh -huh. well that gets the putter back to square, right? Tiger talked about releasing the putter. Uh -huh. Well, that's activating the kick point. That's the release, right? right? So the same thing here, I don't ever want you to feel like the gun is going to unload. Uh -huh. Like, I just want you to feel like it's loaded the whole time. And the cool mm -hmm. thing is I'm, I'm holding it here, so it's never going to... So for me, just know. like putting and driving, mm -hmm. people get fit for me for a putter, and they like putt really well in here. They <coughs> putt really pretty good the first couple times on the course, and they call me like, man, something happened. When and I go, yeah, because now you got a long finish instead of that finish right where I taught you because I put a finish with their new putter. Uh -huh. And the thing is, is if I do that, all of a sudden my tempo gets pretty good. And when I design a putter for somebody, I want you intentionally trying to hit the ball to move it. Uh -huh. I don't want you afraid to hit the ball to move it because that's when we do stupid things, uh -huh. trying to slow the putter down, uh -huh. right? Right. So just like putting, having to hit it to get it there, mm. I want you actively having to shut the face. Okay. I don't ever want you preventing a face. Mm. Okay. You don't have to tell me twice. No, I know. Another, another, another <laughs> component to what we just did, right, is the brain's not fast enough, nervous system not fast enough to change focus in the swing. Nope. So if you add that to your backswing mm -hmm. and, and make that I can definitely do focus, that. Then that's it. I can definitely right. do that. Yeah, that's what Start I did there. Start with the cue boy all the that's way it. through. That's it. I did everything the exactly. same. I just tried to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just exactly. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please tell me, if there is a god, you will answer yes to this question. Please tell me that you have seen the movie Over the Top. Oh, with Rocky. Yeah. Or Sylvester Sloan. Oh my God, I've seen it a hundred times. I literally think about it. You're driving your truck, got a little yep. dip in the lip, yep. you're pumping down the road, yep. and you got your little, you're doing your little oh, curls yeah. as you yeah. go down the road, right? Right. Okay, I want you to get, get into it. an arm wrestling match with Rocky. And dude, he's gonna hold that but thing. Do the opposite, right? I he can is do it gonna this way. hold this right. thing, and uh -huh. dude, you're gonna have to get down here, uh -huh. and then That's we're not going over the top. Picture. That's where the handheld would be huge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. The hand held into the yeah. wall. That's that's my favorite thing about that, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, we'll have to incorporate all that. Yeah. I think there's a lot you can all do. Right. I, I think that's a, that's a big thing. Right? I, I like that. Yeah. I, I, I do. Your, your focus is always there. Because that felt, that felt pretty effortless. Yeah. I don't know what the speed was, but it rotates, it rotates but it just felt, like the... Like it, sometimes when I swing, it's almost like I feel like the club just wants to go. Yeah. Like I'm in a spot to where the... Sp spiral or whatever you want to call it just 
just like unloads. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I like it. Hmm. Interesting. Give us a bow, didn't give us a club. The quad get, or the. I hit that. I hit that dead on the heel. Dead in the heel. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. You hit that dead in the heel. I know, and it's still one ninety three. <laughs> it's not mm. terrible. No. It does feel like the club wants to go though. Yeah. So you just you just talked about. How he sets up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go back how he sets up. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, then watch the difference in that. The way he hits right it. Right there in his head movement that way. He pulls right. it out. Right. Yep, he starts backing it up and there, out. There, same distance. But look at how his left side of his yeah. body is trying yeah. to work back yeah. and up and right. out of the way. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying it's not incredible that you can do that. No, no, it right. is. But I've hit every ball on the heel. I usually center punch it. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think for you, this takes away the last little piece of what's like, in my mind, right? Let's just go back to like when we were kids on the driving range, right? Uh -huh. You want to move as far that way as you can. Uh -huh. Okay. In concept, right? Uh -huh. So I think that by getting this AC more back, that finally lets this last thing that's trying to pull you back this way, it finally lets go. And now do, you do that again. I want to and, and say that about getting the AC back. Okay. okay. So I think by increasing, so like Dr. Lecay said, we're going to think right cuboid, mm -hmm. right as AC all day long. Okay. And I think by getting this, if we're kind of thinking from a very basic concept, of trying to move everything as far away from the golf ball as po or I'm sorry, as far away from the target as possible, then I think what's really nice about this is when this goes all the way, the last thing trying to hold you over here left finally lets go. For you to get that all the way, man, this has to let go. Yeah. It has to. Or you didn't get there. <laughs> so do we want to even go more than 85? I don't think it will go more than 85. Okay, so I, I, kinda, kinda I do honestly what I'm doing from a pressure standpoint, but just get this deeper. I, I think what we're talking about is we're talking about <laughs> the pressure. It's like home base is under that right cuboid, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's true. But stick with me, Joe, because I'm gonna need you on this one. Mm -hmm. I think that that cuboid is actually, if we think about like a spike, like we've been talking about, right? Mm -hmm. I think we spike the amount of pressure underneath the trail cuboid at two. I can agree with that. Okay. Okay? So In my opinion, and this is what I know. Create that torque early. Early. And like out of there. Like the way to make more there is less here. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So here's the reason yep. that I think that's so key. If we do that, mm -hmm. there's a couple really good things that happen. The first one is that, like you said, the cuboid loads and then flexes more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the spike is the load. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to the pressure as he rotates? Well, now that dot kind of turns and probably finds a little heel. Yeah, it, it actually goes up. Yep, in up and this back. Direction. Yep. Twist up. Right, yeah. but I would say it, that yeah. if we it definitely it definitely yeah. goes towards the heel, no doubt. Yeah. So every biomechanist knows that. Everybody oh. tells you put your pressure in your right heel. Oh. You teach somebody to put their pressure in the right heel, and they do this, and they yeah. suck yeah. golf. Yeah. Right, like yeah. okay. So here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that by two, mm -hmm. I'm like that, right? Mm -hmm. So cuboid is here, right there. Okay. Yep. So cuboid's right here mm -hmm. at two. Yep. Right. So now guess what? So now what's it going to do? It's going to go up. Yeah, there you go. Up yep, more. it works yep. right back right. into the heel. Heel comes this yep. way. Yeah, toes go that way, just creating that yep. torque. So literally, I want you just feeling like earlier, just really early. Do that. Well, that's hard because you get your golf shoes on. Here, don't do it there because you'll rip that off. Stand over here because this is glued yep. down. 
Just try to twist your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. But when you did that, do it one more time. Lamp. Lamp. Well. You want to get f***ing man animalistic with it. All right, yeah. let's get animalistic with it. Yeah. I want you to, like, I want to know where you were standing when you hit balls. Uh -huh. and I want to be able to walk over there a week later and go, oh, look where Eddie was hitting balls at. Uh -huh. Here's his feet. So we want pressure yeah. both feet doing it yeah. yep. at the same time? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We, want to, we want to, you said it best, right? We want to load the spine equally on both sides. Okay. Both sides have to do something to accomplish something in the spine. Yeah. Why don't I hit 10 balls in a row? And I'm going to focus on the AC joint and doing that early. Okay. And do that. Let's do it. All right. No, nobody wants to watch you hit balls, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs>was just decided it doesn't like us. Yeah, that was 357 carry. Is that that RC, that's an RCT ball, right? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, that was good. What's oh, the that, warning it gave us? I've never <laughs> what's it say? That was a little different. What's it say on the bottom? 2035? No, the It said Three, something. 367 carry at 2250. That's what I'm saying, man. I want you feeling like when you look, when you get that was a flat cut here. I love flat. <laughs> the ball's cuts. gone. When you get here, mm -hmm. it's either the flat cut if we don't quite get the face, right. but you have or an opportunity here. When you're sitting on that grid and you need one, mm -hmm. your job is to get it there. Mm -hmm. And dude, from right here, you go, motherfucker. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got something for you. And instead of going, I'm going to be passive because I'm afraid it's going that way. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna know that if this but is this, in, this won't allow it to go that way. Correct, because so you got so the, if I can get them sequenced up and yeah, I mean, dude, just synced up. I'm seeing it's all AC joints. Yeah, that's all. I'm just yeah. trying to. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to create more torque in my feet, yeah. and just trying to really get that AC joint kind of. That looks smooth. <laughs> Too old. Yeah. It doesn't look like it either, does it? No, it looks smooth. That's basically effortless, man. That was centered, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. Can I make a comment? Yep. You seem slower in the feet there. I was Go. focusing more on the shoulder. Oh, I, I didn't. I wasn't thinking of the feet. I was thinking of the AC joint. Yes. I'll think of both this time. Think of think of one. Feet as hard as you can. Uh -huh. And then what you're feeling move with the feet is you're just feeling that AC float. Okay. Don't try to put any effort into that. Okay. Try to drive it back there with your feet. With feet. Okay. That makes sense. I love it. Just let it float, buddy. That was 139 on this and 203, 362 carry. Hey, I would like to present one thing. If you remember, I said that from a loading the frontal plane perspective, you were doing pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. We were maximizing that, but we were talking about the braking mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. And if we look here, yeah. your maximum negative horizontal force or moving away from the target mm -hmm. is now timed up much better with your vertical force. Okay. And if you remember before, that was way out of sequence. And I was like, hey, you can look at it through the transverse or from the frontal. Yeah. But that wasn't timed up nearly as well. And that looks like a guy who just can't miss a golf ball from that position. Yeah, that's really good right there. <laughs> that's kind of nice, huh? Yeah. So the cool thing is, is I think that this is even going to get better. But look at how much higher your torque is, dude. Mm. That is stupid. He did not have any. Like, if we go back, look at this.
If we go back into when I met you, okay, I believe this is the swing that we've decided was the good one for the most part from that session. Oh my God. It's kind of crazy, huh? Uh -huh. So this was a good one from back then, uh -huh. but you can see how the torque kind of looks a little more wonky there. Uh -huh. You go here, Ooh, yeah. we're starting to shape that up. Now we still got a little bit here that we, we can clean more. that up. Yeah, we're going to spike it. That's spike. just you learning how to do it. And once That's again, right. I think giving you less resistance in the transverse means softer shaft in the butt. So I hate this word. I can't believe I'm actually going to say it. I want you to twist it as hard as you can, and then your job is to lag it. Okay. Right? Twist the feet hard both directions. You're going to spin the plate as hard as you can to the right, then spin it as hard as you can to the left. All feet. That had a different sound to it. Yeah, that was interesting. That was 209 ball speed on here. Jesus, dude. Wow, that's freaking crazy. I'm, and I'm not real, I mean, I'm getting after it, but I'm not getting after it, right? 143, 208. All right, so this is where it gets a little weird. I'm mm -hmm. getting really greedy. I'm getting real greedy. Okay. Okay. I want you to twist it with what everything you're doing with your feet. It is a pure twist of the ankles. But here's the thing. I don't want you trying to get the club back on the ball. I want you to feel like you're just going to twist and take off in a spiral like, right. like that. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Do not try to get it back. Just let it float, and dude, that thing, as much force as you put into it, uh -huh. that shaft is going back over to here somewhere, uh -huh. right? Let it. Okay. Let that thing get as far as it can. And, and transition, just Just make that. sure, dude, you drop the macho man on it. Okay. Really slow that down in transition, in terms of the float. Feels slow. Twist, go. You don't know how long I've been teaching this to swing with your feet. Fifteen years ago. They don't believe me either. Yeah, I didn't get the carry right. <laughs> that went a little farther than 233. You're fine. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, that's, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. Like, that probably just won us a belt. Like, play length? Yeah. Oh, in the senior division? Yeah, no doubt. Like, dude, I literally want you to forget that it's the world long drive. Yeah. And, like, wake up and it's Tuesday. Yeah. And Friday you go win. That's why he was in 2022. Yeah, the track man's totally off, just so you know. I haven't rewound it. <laughs> 209. 45, 210. <laughs> How the hell did you... Dude, you just swung at 145 miles an hour. Yeah. Didn't really feel like it. it I'm just trying to... Just be more explosive in the ground. That's so straight for as hard as he's hitting it. I can tell you one thing right now. 211 again. God yeah. Damn. Your back wing has never been that loud before. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to basically force it. No, I mean. Like, like just trying to. Going back Create some more, more like 18.6 compared to 21.7 like I normally am. Ooh, Jesus Christ. That was a good one. What was that? 43, 212 and a half. Almost 370 carry. Launched at 7, carried at like 26.
See, that was smoother, but I think that might have been faster. It flashed a number and then immediately went away. Like, it doesn't want to try to... That's hilarious. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. That was 214 ball speed here. I just waited. That's Holy what I got, shit. That. So I was just a smidge more patient from the top, and I just I tried to get it here. That was 216. That's crazy, man. That's on track. That's crazy. Did we get that one on video? Yeah. I got this one. That too. was uh, that was that was right in center. That was center punched. I mean, basically zeros across the board. By the way, I think it went kind of straight too. I don't see that shaft drooping. That was uh, that was a good one. So 